Hi everyone, welcome back. I see a lot of nipple shields on baby registries and I often get asked pretty early on in the hospital if someone's experiencing sore nipples, if I think this would help them. So today we're gonna answer all your questions about nipple shields and discuss the pros and cons of use of this little seemingly harmless device. My name is Cassie Reyes, I'm one of the co-founders of People's Lactation. I am a registered nurse, an international board certified lactation consultant. Say that three times fast. My goal is to make the most evidence-based and up-to-date information on infant feeding available to you. So stay tuned, subscribe, give us a like, and make sure you hit the bell so that you're notified each week when I post a new video. I'll be posting a new video every Tuesday evening. So as promised, I am gonna teach you how to place a nipple shield in case that you do end up needing to use it, in case that it is recommended by your postpartum nurse or your lactation consultant. Placement is super important. If you're just given one of these, which hopefully you'll get proper teaching in the hospital, but just in case, let me show you how to put one of these things on. All right, so, in the case that we have a shorter nipple or an inverted nipple, the idea is for the nipple to be pulled up into this little cone area. We achieve that by, first of all, let me put down my breast. <laughs> that sounds funny. Let me put down my breast. Hmm. All right. So we're gonna put our thumbs on the base of the nipple and we're gonna flip it halfway inside out so it leaves a little dimple in the end. Like that. And we're gonna place the nipple into this dimple. And then we're going to stretch the base of the shield over the breast and it should pop the nipple right up into it. Extends the nipple a little bit to help an infant who's having trouble latching, latch onto the breast. We are going to talk about some of the pros and cons of using this device. The shield has little holes in the end where colostrum or milk will be transferred to baby. Some shields have this little cutout area here, which promotes a little bit more skin to skin with latching. Uh, and baby's nose should be right up against the parent's skin instead of being pressed up against plastic or silicone. So if you're in the market for a nipple shield, look for this cutout and I would recommend getting one that is made out of silicone. As far as sizing goes, your nurse or lactation consultant should help you initially to find the correct size. But what we are looking for is for the shield to pull the nipple up into this cone area. We're looking for conical part of the shield to fit inside of your baby's mouth. Um, when a baby is properly latched to a nipple shield, their jaws should be low and sort of at the edge of the areola and their mouth should be up and over all of the conical part of the shield and the tip should be reaching for the back of the baby's mouth. So we do not want to see this aimed at baby's mouth and baby just chomping on the end of this. Maybe you want to aim the nipple up to the nose so baby has to have the chin land at the edge of the areola, open their mouth wide, uh -huh. up and over, up and over. I try to avoid this little device at all costs. Maybe not at all costs, that sounds a little dramatic, but I try to avoid it as much as possible because there are some downsides to using a nipple shield, especially when it's not needed. Some reasons for using a nipple shield would be if baby's having a lot of trouble latching. Sometimes 
there's something with the baby's oral anatomy or sometimes baby's having a really difficult time if the parent's nipple is a little bit short or inverted. Um, feeling the nipple tickle the roof of the mouth, which is where the infant's suck reflex is. When I've tried all the other tricks in the book, I may introduce a nipple shield. I really try to avoid this in the early days though. And I avoid it because there are downsides to using this. This acts as a barrier between mom and baby. In other videos, I've discussed the importance of breast stimulation in milk supply. If nipple shield is used long term, it can affect milk supply because each time baby goes to breast, there's just a little less stimulation. Normally, if I introduce this, we're also going to be discussing a little bit of pumping. Another downside to introducing this early on is that it is really tricky sometimes to get a baby who's gotten used to using this to wean off of it. Most people don't enjoy using one of these. It's a pain in the butt. You put it on, it falls off. You try to position the baby, they kick it off. It's not fun to use and the goal when we introduce one of these is to use it hopefully for two weeks, maybe three weeks or less. The ideal situation would be to have a plan for getting the baby off of needing the shield and have the parent work with a lactation consultant to be able to help them with that process of weaning. Another disadvantage to using a shield is that it can cause a little less milk transfer. Babies don't tend to get an ideal latch with a shield and may transfer less milk, in turn putting the parent at risk for more plug ducts and possibly mastitis. To answer the age-old question on whether or not this can be a useful tool for sore nipples. I tend to lean towards no. It can be really difficult for a baby to get an ideal latch. They tend to get pretty shallow and kind of chomp on the end of the shield. And if baby already doesn't have an ideal latch and we introduce a nipple shield, it can just continue to feel like a painful, chompy, pinchy latch over a silicone shield. If you have any requests for videos, make sure to leave a comment down below and I'd be happy to address any of your questions or concerns. I do have a request for a video on the use of a silicone breast pump or a haka pump. So I have placed an order for one of those pumps so I have one to show you in person with tips and tricks on the use of that. See you next week. If you found the information in this video helpful, make sure to subscribe down below, give us a like, and check out some of our other videos, and share this video with families that you know who could use the little bit of extra help with getting their breastfeeding off to a good start.